that's the way you put it on, that's the way you take it off. What's the matter? What's the matter? Hey, what's the matter? I ran one of those in 1944, 1943 it was, I first ran one of those, and they're not a detachable bar or a head end, what they call it up there. They weigh the total of this, weighs 123 pounds. This one here is a mall, a chain drive, which weighs about 146 pounds. The head faller is the man that grabs the light end up here and the machine man was me who ran that zone and you did your falling with that. Shows a picture of a fella here with one of them there. That would probably be in the vicinity of uh, I would say 1944-45. We didn't wear hard hats as such. That's an old felt hat we used to wear when we were young. You used to do the falling with that. Part of the bucking of the trees, as demonstrated over there. They were a heavy old saw. If you got them stuck, you couldn't get them out without taking them completely apart here and there, which was time consuming because it was always contract work. Everything was done in contract. One of these is called a pickaroon axe and you cut your undercut in on two slopes and then you took that axe and picked it out. And I can't say it on your little television there or what they used to call that, but it sure hurt when it, the chips flew out and hit you. These are the covers for the saws that hold them on. Around the chain is what they used to, this is called an old scratch chain, which is the same as there, filed with a flat file. They didn't change the files to Oregon chisel chains till uh, probably 1948 or 49. That axe you'll see over in the corner is the old time falling axe where two men use springboards, which we can probably find one here somewhere as I see one behind me. This is a mall saw. That was one not the first, but one of the first one-man saws. You can see there's no head end as such on there as they have on there, and if you got stuck you could pull it out. The wrench is to put the bar and chain back on again. These are shoes that are on the floor here, are what the fallers with cork boots used to use, and you slip your feet and go in for your supper. And when you come back out, you kicked them off because you had coke boots on and you couldn't wear them in the cookhouse. Mark up the floor. They would mark up the floor. These are the days of the old hand fiddle where you used to... Two-man jobbies. Two-man jobbies. This is an old springboard here, which you cut a notch three inches deep, thick, I mean four inches deep and had a little cleat on it and you stuck it in the tree up high because you had to get up, they had what they call swell butts. You wanted to get above that to make it easier cutting. So you put those up and then you stood on those and you fell and you kicked them around with your feet so that you could go around the tree to fall. Oh. This is part of the handle that fits on the end down in there, tied, they're all tied in here. These are called falling handles because they're very short. A bucking handle, this part would be long because you use two hands on it. With that there, you usually only use one hand. You had a little oil bottle with coal oil in it. That would pack it in your belt till you got up the tree, you stuck it in the tree, and when you run into pitch with these saws, you would shake the kerosene on it, the coal oil kerosene they call it nowadays to stop it so, so that it would slide easier. Water, nothing would work. Just kerosene was the only thing we used to use. And steel wedges and a nine pound sledge. Both had axes which you chopped with all the time like those there. The bucking axe was always a broader axe, much broader. Stuck your cork boots right in there.
they have them tied in, or no, they're not. And as such, you would stick them in the tree and then climb up on them, kick it around this way as you were coming around the tree with the little lip, which is quite pronounced there, to stick in the tree. When the tree went, you jumped down and then you kicked it out, put it over your shoulder with the rest of your gear, and you took much, off. Much like the, what we're seeing here behind you. That's right. That, that is quite a big tree. That is something like I was telling you, the one I fell with, it was 13 feet, 11 inches across. It took me from 8 in the morning till 2.30 in the afternoon to get it down with a power saw, an 090 steel power saw, and a 60 inch bar and a lot of work. These here, I have bucked as such with one of those saws just given it to. And when we were in good shape, when I used to weigh about 215 and I was about 17 years old, I would cut through that without stopping. You would cut totally the whole thing off. And how long to cut that? About 40 minutes. About 40 minutes about to cut 40 that minutes off. to cut that off. Now, nowadays? Oh, probably two, one and a half, two minutes. With a, with a, uh, with a power saw? saw? Yeah, with a good saw and filing, uh, uh, one and a half, two minutes. You have to make sure that you cut with a power saw. Nowadays, you have to cut almost as smooth as that because if you leave what they call a carf in it, a little bit of a ledge, then you have to measure from the short side back. And if it's plywood, you can't have something seven feet, eight inches because that don't make eight, in, eight feet. You have to be over always a couple of inches on your cuts, which is not always possible, but mostly. This is splicing when you splice your cables up, and believe you me, if I do say so, it's quite an art. And very few people left know how to do it. There's your what you cut them off with. There's your hammer and your marlin spike, and you put eye splices or long splices together. Many different kinds of splices of, of which I do. So the same type of splicing they would use to make a steel hauser for a tug. That's exactly the same. Only on, on tugboats, usually it's what they call a left lay on left lay. Less because of the coiling system oh, on, the, see, right. on the tug. And you, uh, with rope, you, when you splice rope together, you splice from left to right. And when you splice cable, you splice from right to left. Ah. There's a difference in the lay of the cable. This cable lays one way, rope lays the other way. Normally all rope is that way, except braided rope. You keep moving up in the air, and there's your saw, there's the wedge, the bottle I was speaking about, that you have, and there's your bag for your wedges. Your the bottle is for? That's a bottle with a coal oil to put on your saw. Right. And you stuck it in this thing like that, out of your way. And when the tree went, you lifted it off, let the tree go. There's a springboard right there as such. One there, one here. Then they can reach up there to fall. And there's the steel wedges up there. And that is your falling pack, which is a very narrow bit. And you chop a lot of your cuts in, and then you use the big fiddle here. See how long that one is there? I use those. Yeah, that looks about true to form. We used to call these last hopes. It's a yeast hope. This is for running the girdies on your your girdies are down there at the back of your boat. Right. And you run that through there. Today we we call them deep lines, which I have on the electric on the boat. But those there, you can see them right on that little boat right there. But they run back and there's your girdies. And they were on both sides of your vessel. Run with clutches, they're all brass. And East Hope now, of course, is one of the most collectible uh, engines for hardcore collectors. Beautiful, beautiful. 
we used to call them last Oak because there was Palmer, Vivian, and, and East Oak were the three main ones that they made. Palmer was a, had the valves in the head like they have right now, but East Hope and Vivian were built like this with the valves on the outside. An oil cup here for oiling your cylinders with a little catch on it there, which you pull it up and it would drip, 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 drip in for your crankshaft. No oil in the base. And the East Hope was designed in Western Canada, was it not? Yes. Mm -hmm. And this, this is, I can't remember the name of this clutch now. I, I don't know why, but it, it just slips my memory. But they were uh, an old, easy old rig with reverse working there, tightening the band and stopping them much is the same as the Chrysler they invented in 1947. No bicycles, no skateboarding, and no roller skating.